Remember when Republicans criticized President Obama for alienating U.S. allies? Instead of managing American decline, leaving allies to doubt us and adversaries to test us, we will act in the conviction that the United States is still the greatest force for peace and liberty that this world has ever known. Under my administration, our friends will see more loyalty, and Mr. Putin will see a little less flexibility and more backbone. The past eight years gave witness to a serial degrading of our alliances and partnerships all across the globe. It's only a couple of years ago, but it feels so vintage. Uh, but after President Trump called the Prime Minister of Canada, Canada, very dishonest and weak, and refused to sign a joint statement from a summit of major U.S. allies, those same Republicans have been silent. And this is all over an issue that's long been one of the Republican Party's central tenets, free trade. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau earned President Trump's ire by saying his country would respond with reciprocal tariffs after the Trump administration imposed tariffs on Canada. One exception to Republican leaders' widespread silence, Arizona Senator John McCain, who tweeted, to our allies' bipartisan majorities of Americans remain pro-free trade, pro-globalization, and supportive of alliances based on 70 years of shared values. Americans stand with you even if our president does not. I'm joined now by South Dakota Republican Senator Mike Rounds. Senator, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate the opportunity to visit with you. What do you think of John McCain's tweet? Do you agree? I agree with Senator McCain that we are that we are pro-trade and that most of us want to see free trade. I did like the idea that uh, President Trump suggested earlier that we eliminate all tariffs. The challenge is that it's just not that easy because everybody wants to make sure that if one country happens to subsidize their products, that the other countries want to be able to do something about it. We have but in the a meantime, I think he Canada tossed one trade, in there that though. was Why is he going after popular. Canada? We've got a surplus. Look, I, you know, I, I understand that today, and it was puzzling to me as to why he took that approach. I, as I've suggested earlier, I'd really like to know what the rest of the story is. I, I didn't see anything in uh, what the prime minister suggested that he hadn't suggested earlier. And so I'd, I'd really like to know what was in the agreement that the group had about what the statement would be like or how they were going to treat it. Because clearly his, his attack was, in my opinion, it was, it was out of character without having something that uh, caused him to feel very, very strongly about an agreement that had been uh, broken. And so it, it, I'd like to know the rest of the story. When you say it's out of character, I, I'm, I'm a little confused because the president has, has made a, um, a presidency out of, out of breaking deals that we have been in with our allies. Uh, the Iran deal, the Paris Climate Accord, uh, he did not sign on to, to TPP. I mean, the list goes on. This seems like it's completely in character with him to walk away from signing on to a, a joint statement from our, from our allies. Well, I understand that he believes very strongly that he can make a better deal than what we had, and I, I agree. I'd like to have the TPP in place today. I'd love to have the NAFTA agreement completed and, and back in force again. The president truly believes that he's going to have to, to come in and to create some chaos in order to get a better deal. Uh, it doesn't mean it would be the style that I would use, but I'm not the president of the United States. He is. And what I think he's trying to do is, is to make better deals for our producers. What concerns me, and the reason why I suggest it's out of character, is that he very seldom attacks. He normally counterattacks. And what I don't understand is what the agreement had been that might have caused him to be as clearly irritated as he suggested in, in, in the White House statement, because that was a very, very strong statement yeah. that we don't like to see happen between some of our best friends that are out there. And clearly Canada is one of our closest trading partners and one of our very closest allies. And we don't want to see uh, bad blood between us. And again, we have, a, we have a surplus with Canada when it comes to the trading of goods and services. Um, but let's I, I listen think, to, let, let me, let me, let me hey, listen. Katie, okay, sure. before, you, before you go from there, though, but remember that there are also some things in there that a lot of ag producers feel uncomfortable about. It doesn't mean that it's perfect. And if there's a way to make it better than what it was, I'm all in favor of the president trying to renegotiate. Well, but your fellow I just wanted Senator to get that Joni Aaron, I know yeah. your fellow Senator Joni Aaron said um, if he's going to close down uh, certain markets, he should be opening up new ones. And, and uh, as far as I can tell, she's still waiting for uh, those new markets to open up. There's a lot of I, farmers I in, in the Midwest yeah, I, who 
are concerned. I would concur in that. Yeah. I would concur in that. It, it's kind of like, look, if we're going to have arguments with NAFTA, and at the same time we're going to go after the big dog, which is China, TPP would have really put us into a lot better trading position because that's a half a billion people who want to do business with us. And it's one area that China would love to see us fail in getting those folks to do business with us because that leaves China as the big trading partner for those folks that otherwise would like to do business with the United States as well. Senator, with all due respect, why are you giving the president so much benefit of the doubt here? When you clearly disagree with what he's doing, why don't you just call him out and say, this is not right, this is not the way we behave. We need them, they're our allies. You don't go throwing a temper tantrum. Well, we, we do believe that clearly he had to have had some kind of an agreement in advance. And I don't know what the story is. Would you it give this sort of benefit of the doubt to, to President Obama? I'm sorry? Would you have given this sort of benefit of the doubt to President Obama? I have, and I would, until I know the whole story. Um, and so, look, in each particular case, you're going to find that we do want, I think we all agree we want free trade. I think we all agree over here that, that we can do better than what we've had in the past, but it's not going to be easy. And I think we all want to, want to be able to negotiate from a position of strength. It's not the style that I would use necessarily coming after them and taking them all on at once. But if the president came here to make change, he's got change coming from all directions. Personally, I would have liked to have seen NAFTA put together and completed. Personally, I would have liked to have seen TPP in place or something similar to it, or at least one tra trade agreement completed before we start uh, going after China. But uh, this is the approach the president's chosen. The what end result is, is we want to see we want to see what his game plan is. What is we the, want to know what the end game is. What is the generous reading, since I think you're going to give it to him, the generous reading of why um, Peter Navarro, the White House trade advisor, would go on to another cable news network and say there's a special place in hell uh, for an ally who engages in bad faith diplomacy with President Donald J. Trump. Why would he say that as the president's going to Singapore to talk with one of our enemies, our adversaries. Why would he say that uh, honestly, about an ally? I, Katie, I, I can't tell you. I, I don't know. What, what I do know is that there was a suggestion that there had been an agreement and that clearly it was a very strong disagreement that the president felt uh, had been broached, uh, that, the, that the prime minister had done something that he had totally unexpected. That's the only explanation that I can give because most certainly we don't like that kind of language. The hyperbole involved in that is something that you very, very seldom ever hear. And it's something that, uh, that most of us don't want to see ever when we're talking about our trading partners and some of our closest allies. I would so call most it certainly, I'd sure like to hear the rest of the story on it and yeah. the explanation. Oh. We haven't heard it yet. I'd call it more than hyperbole. I would call that an attack. Uh, finally, on Russia, the president wants to let him back into the G7, make it a G8 again. What do you think? I disagree. Uh, I think Mr. Putin has proven himself uh, to be untrustworthy and, and not a member uh, that deserves to be back in the G7 to make it the G8 once again. Uh, what he did in literally the annexation that he was actively involved with uh, it, it clearly is wrong. And uh, Russia has to be held accountable for that. So Why do you think the I president wants to let him back in? I don't know. Uh, look, I, I, I honestly thought to begin with that it might simply be because one way in which this president thrives is, is if there is chaos, he does his best to make good things happen out of chaos where he can take all the building blocks and start over again. And uh, the only thing I can think of is, is that he clearly wanted to send a message that uh, he's going to drive the discussion, he's going to drive the narrative. And part of it, everybody was talking about it. It gave him the opportunity to get his points across. And you could see in all of the different pictures that were issued and so forth, the other folks weren't happy with the president. But nonetheless, he didn't come there to make them happy. He came to represent a better trade deal for the United States. And I don't understand it. Uh, I'd sure like to understand the end game that he's going after. Personally, I don't get it. Senator Mike Brown. Senator, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it. You bet. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.